good evening and a warm welcome to all esteemed participants joining us for this auspicious gathering organized live by Tisha Bharat. We are delighted to have you back with us on this significant day six of the My Bharat campaign. I'm Gayatri Rajara, your host for today's session. And it is an honor to be in the company of such distinguished individuals. Of the thousands of civilizations that the human evolutions has witnessed, undoubtedly the only living and vibrant culture which has withstood the onslaughts of invasions for over two million years is Bharat. To make the youth of this country know about the glories of the past, saga of freedom, Disha Bharat, an NGO started in 2005, conducts various programs on the theme my nation, my pride, my role. These programs ignite patriotism and invoke a sense of responsibility in youth towards building a brighter future. A warm welcome to you all on one such event, the 15 day lecture series with eminent speakers. Today is the much awaited deliberation by the maker of a revolutionary cinema on the biggest tragedy of the oldest civilization. Vivek Ranjan Agnihotri is an Indian film director, film producer, screenwriter, and author. He's a member of the Board of India Central Board of Film Certification and a cultural representative of Indian cinema at the Indian Council for Cultural Relations. A world-renowned movie maker, well-known across the globe for his movies. We all know the Tashman Files 2019, which emerged as a commercial success and earned him the National Film Award for Best Screenplay. Dialogues and Kashmir Files 2022, which emerged as one of the highest crossing Indian film of 2022. May I request our guest to enlighten the audience on the topic, My Bharat, Nationalism and Indic Cinema. It's a pleasure to have you with us, Vivek Agni Othriji, and over to you. Namaskar, Namaskar everybody. Wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is such a delight to be present here today, speaking to all of you. Especially three points which I feel very passionate about, which are the reason of my drive, my energy, and which now has also become the purpose of my life. Number one is cinema. Second is Indian stories. And the third is nationalism. If somebody asked me what are the pillars of my life today, I would say four pillars. Cinema, Indic values, nationalism, and my relationship with all those people who believe in the same core values of great Hindu civilization. So let me begin why cinema is my passion. The reason is that there are many ways of telling stories. In this world, if you see, everybody is telling a story. All of us are stories. And these stories ultimately are consumed either in the form of epics like Ramayana, Mahabharat, or uh, short stories, films, uh, drama, uh, novels. But if you see, cinema is the only medium of communication, which is holistic. It's got both sound and video. And it creates a dimension of life in front of you. It takes you in the homes of the characters, it takes you in the complexities of the characters, it 
you start following the character then you become the character themselves and ultimately you also try to achieve what the hero of the film wants to achieve the power of cinema is that it is it is a massy medium so if you want to bring about a revolution if you are a storyteller and if you want to bring about a revolution in the society if you want to change the society or if you want to put across a point of view in the society or if you also are at a war and you want to fight your enemy cinema is the most powerful tool and i am not saying it only because i believe in it i will also support it with an evidence and a, such a strong evidence that nobody in this world uh, can challenge it during the world war 2 america realized that they they were a they were on two different continents they realized that this war against hitler can't be won only with arms and bombs so they realize okay if we can change the public opinion against him then as a on one side we will attack hitler with soft power on the other side with hard power of us, our planes and our bombs and our guns and our soldiers or army navy air force so what they did they realized cinema is that medium which can change public opinion against him which means challenging the culture of german people the history of german people the traditions of german people and turn them around their own leader so then they cia made a deal with a uh, hollywood and they invested billions of dollar tonight after i finish this event is finished you should go to google search about it read some very authentic articles on how uh, cia and government of us used uh, hollywood as soft power to win the war this story had inspired me a lot because that is not indian thinking we have rarely used our literature and our theater or cinema to change the opinion global opinion especially the western opinion about india or we have failed to use it as a soft power which can not just win us the narrative war but also help our economy and our positioning in the world in terms of image and identity hollywood has been doing it consistently since the world war 2 that's why you will find that whenever there is a disaster movie they always show that is the american agents who have saved the world from the bigger enemy even if there's an alien or ufo it's always the american army which saves us or america saves us or somebody from america saves us so they created this position of that american democracy is the best american america is the savior on after that the korean people a small tiny country they also realized the power then they started a k entertainment revolution which is korean entertainment they used their pop songs their hip hop songs they used uh, all kinds of their entertainment but especially the cinema korean cinema and if you see in last few years korean cinema has been winning oscars and it is doing extraordinary business it has taken over the world in such a way that even america today feels threatened hollywood feels threatened and they see they see k entertainment which is korean cinema and korean cinema music uh, as a very big challenge to the existence and the future of hollywood i said that it's what if india also uses cinema as a soft power what is next so this is one i'll come back to this and i'll connect these three things the second was indic stories what fascinated me i have read almost all fables tales epics uh, folk tales of various cultures of the world because i travel a lot and it is my passion so wherever i go i pick up books and i read about their folk tales and their epics and their mythological uh, uh, stories also their historical story 
excuse me so i learned about various cultures and i realized that in the world there were four or five kinds of main cultural stories one basically was about the messengers and the saviors and messiahs which is the world is suffering a messiah comes or a messenger of god comes and he creates a code of conduct a commandment list of commandments or a code of conduct <coughs> and he says if you do not follow this you will go to hell and if you remain obedient to me then you will go to heaven it is simple crime and punishment so if you don't do this you will be punished if you do this you can go to heaven and so therefore it is what i call a carrot and stick uh, kind of cultural stories which says if you are if you follow me if you believe there is only one god in this world then i will give you a carrot to eat like they do to monkeys but if you challenge my authority then i am going to stick your ass carrot and stick so this is one major story and this is the story which has created the maximum violence in, also in the world i'll tell you later then the second kind of story which has been going on was that everything is nice everything is beautiful just live eat do farming raise your children there are no major moral ethics uh, ethical codes there is nothing and there can be there is the real gods are only uh, what are visible to our eyes which is fire and uh, earth and uh, sun so therefore that story which believed in the cosmic objects and the nature of cos cosmos the nature the nature of the mother nature which is sun fire heat and all those things around that people created stories then there are stories only of suffering in this world you will find that in most of most of the world still is suffering not uh, emotionally perhaps not emotionally but they are suffering physically they live in extreme heat they don't have a great facilities utilities so their life is full of challenge and these are generally human beings versus animals so in most of these stories in like in africa you will find in lots of uh, tribal areas even in india you will find these stories these stories where the gods are animals either a lion in some places you will find even a wolf is treated like a a, a, a god which means these are the forces which you fear so in the first story they fear the messiah the messenger of god if you don't obey him if you don't surrender to him you will go to hell the second one is if you do not surrender to the uh, nature then you will go to hell which is like if you don't bow down to sun you will go to hell then the third one was basically human versus human that was generally in a in a tribal village you will have one leader and he will be treated like a god so he is like the the he is like a dictator so you basically create, the dictator creates a tribe around him and everybody surrenders to him subordinates to him and that's how the story is coming but the last one is the indic story the original hindu civilizational story form which believed that the way to reach the truth are myriad are millions trillions it can there is infinite ways to reach the truth and negating any other way is violence like they say there is only one allah or one uh, jesus or one god or one muhammad sah we never believed in messiahs and messengers we believe there is one force and that force transforms into various various forms and shapes and dimensions and therefore we created you imagine 
every household has a different guruji maharaj ji then swami ji then they have a kul guru then they believe in general whichever area they live in north east south west accordingly they believe in those uh, devtas then the gods and on top of that despite ram krishna everything then they also worship brahma vishnu mahesh and before that they also worship the param shakti they also worship the trees the the cows the earth the sun you name it the grass even grass dhoop se bhi pooja hoti hai if you see now ravan every single thing from coconut to you can imagine even the sugar cubes every single thing you imagine ultimately became that we are nobody and we have to surrender to the complexities of life of different dimensions of life i have been doing lot of research on mahabharat and why mahabharat remain the most epic tale in the history of human humanity is that it challenges you and it shows you that dharma does not cannot have one definition unlike ramayan mahabharat is different it says it cannot be one definition the dharma is multi level at home your dharma is this when you are at work it is something else when you are at war it is something else when you are at peace then it's something else and the dimensions of dharma keep changing but at the core the cosmic truth remains which is the goodness dharma the righteousness what is right so i'm sorry i took lot of time to explain this to you because i want you to understand fully what i am trying to say nobody else will tell you i'm sure in my generation no storyteller is going to tell you what i'm telling so i said that what if these great indic stories and indic indic story does not mean ramayan mahabharat or vishnu purana or shiva it also means the stories of today what is bharat now and to understand that we have to understand what are the problems of bharat now if i can awaken youngsters with my cinema whatever it is about the the the, the leftist problems about the nexal issues about the mysteries of last 70 years the murders of last 70 years or the injustice done to our brothers and sisters in kashmir or now i am making a film called the vaccine war which celebrates indian scientists like no other film has ever done before in the most authentic form form and especially the women of india and the indic women of india not the western feminism but the indic our mothers sisters whom the west underestimates how in the vaccine war we are celebrating that to us that's a film of nationalism without even showing indian flag once in the film without saying bharat mata ki jai because the victory of our mothers and sisters in the global scientific field is the victory of bharat and bharatiya values so i said if i tell indic stories use them in cinema as a soft power and if i am being able to expose the enemies of hindu civilization and at the same time tell the world about the greatness of hindu civilization then i am making my nation strong and that is my nationalism so this is how i combine these three things it's a coincidence the organizers also gave me the same theme today i've been talking about this for a long time but today for the first time i have got a theme which defines exactly what i am doing so when i was making these typical bollywood movies big star like chocolate goal and all i realized that my stories were as big or small as the value of the star on that friday my film was as big and as small as the star and bollywood forces you to fit your story into a certain narrative and i somehow cannot agree with that narrative so first two three films i did with lot of heavy heart and with compromise bollywood also forces you to repeat the same stories with people are addicted to and want to tell you the same mediocre stories all the time which have nothing to do with india and therefore i realized that today suppose if you have to go to a new country if you have to go to japan or if you have to go to tanzania or if you have to go to korea or if you have to go to russia or china then the i say the best thing to get familiar with their culture is pick up their five six big films the best films 
and then you'll get to learn about how they look like what are their costumes what are their local costumes what they eat where they live what is the architecture and you will learn something about their culture and values are they family oriented people or not whether they are urban or they are modern or western or traditional but i realized if a foreigner is coming to india and who knows nothing about india and picks up top 5 6 bollywood films he will learn everything about new york and london he learn about western looking and western behaving uh, heroes and heroines and everything but he learn nothing about india and that's when i said it's important for me to quit bollywood and become an independent filmmaker and independent storyteller of indic themes so my journey started with a very very small film tiny film which i made in collaboration with the students of indian school of business in hyderabad and the film was called buddhana traffic jam it was basically exposes urban nexels and their mechanism and how they have infiltrated schools colleges and universities and they are using the minds of young people as weapons against the state of india it was a very dangerous thing when i came across this in my research so we made this film film was struck bollywood boycotted it we made lot of sacrifice i was bankrupt and i had almost packed my bags to go back to my village and that's when i decided to show this film in universities and once we started showing in universities the film was called buddha in a traffic jam that film for the first time brought out the real indian story the real 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 indian story which basically bothers every single middle class indian family that when their children suddenly after 12th go to certain kind of universities they start saying bharat tere tukde honge they become anti nationals no parent i challenge no parent christian sikh buddhist muslim hindu any religion caste creed i can guarantee lower middle class middle class rich can ever teach their children at home to become anti national even if you hate the government but you will never ever tell your child to be anti national then what happens that immediately after the 12th once they go to college then they start thinking they start thinking against parents against their hometown against their traditions against their religion against everything because their minds are being brainwashed so everybody when i was making this one said are this film nobody is going to watch but when this film finally be released in 2016 since then this film is the become the most viewed film on internet and it's become a cult film and the term which came out of the film urban nexels now has become a household name media politicians even judges uh, courts everybody uses this term urban nexels to label certain kind of anti national people then the second film i made was the tashkent files it was another dimension of nationalism because i somehow i thought that very simple rooted people who look very simple rooted typical indian lower class middle class middle class like honest teacher or honest government worker or somebody like that those kind of people suddenly find no respect in the society and therefore you will find those kind of political leaders are also left behind in the race of politics and that took my attention to india's second prime minister lal bahadur shastri and i said what kind of democracy are we if after 50 years we don't know the truth of shastri ji's controversial death in tashkent then where is my right to truth which is promised to me by my constitution so we investigated uh, this we invested four years of our life of our prime life and we made this film called the tashkent files nobody released it everybody said who would be interested in shastri ji people said that why will anybody watch a film which has only dialogues and no outdoors and one room nine 
uh, old people are sitting and they are just discussing this. Who's going to watch this film? Youngsters don't even know about Lal Bahadur Shastri. Why will they come to see this film? With a lot of struggle, we released it in uh, with very small count of cinema halls. Um, film kept running. It became a sleeper hit of that year. It ran for 120 days, unheard of in Bollywood. I don't think any other film has run for so many days. It ran for 120 days. And what everybody thought will not work in the film, the dialogues and the screenplay, got two national awards uh, uh, for screenplay and dialogues. And Pallavi Joshi got for Best Supporting Actress. Then after that, we told the third Indian story which was the Kashmir Files, which came recently. All of you know about it. Everybody said, who's going to watch this film? But ulti then ultimately, this film became the biggest blockbuster ever in uh, Hindi cinema. Not only that, I think it's we made it for 15 crores. It went on to do a business of 350 crores. So you can imagine the return on investment. This film also broke ground. It became a milestone film, a landmark film. It it proved the theories of Bollywood wrong. Uh, Bollywood used to think that audience is not intelligent. We treated our audience as very intelligent and presented two very, very complex films in front of them, very difficult films to understand, but audience understood it very simply. They rose up to challenge. Second thing is they believed that films without stars don't work. We believed that films which have great Indian stories will definitely work. We had so much of faith and trust in our own audience. So we were proved uh, right on that count. Third thing was that they, they somehow uh, believed that the audience is only urban, multiplex audience. I said there is nothing called multiplex audience. Multiplex audience you think is very Western and urban in nature because you make those kind of films. So only those kind of films come to see the film and that's why you call them multiplex audience. We believed that even people who have not seen a film or people who don't go to see a film, if you tell them one good Indian story, they will definitely come to cinema halls and watch. Uh, we had so much of faith and trust and respect for our own people. It is like believing that the audience is dumb, which is Bollywood. We believe audience is very intelligent. They believed Audience does not respect the art of cinema. We believed if you respect the audience, that audience will respect you. We were operating from pure Indic Hindu values. These people were operating from typical uh, Western values, which is me, mine, I, that's it. We were working, their films were Bollywood blockbusters. We call Kashmir Files people's film and a people's blockbuster. So this is the basic difference. Audience understood this. Now we have made just, we are working on two, three films right now. One is called The Delhi Files, which will come uh, next year. The film will tell you the real truth of partition. The truth which nobody has told. The story which nobody till date in cinema has ever told. It. But before that, we are making a, we have just finished, almost finished a film called The Vaccine War, which is releasing very soon, I think end of September. As I told you, this film celebrates the women power, the Indic women power, the power of Indian resilience, the power of Hindu values. I'm saying Hindu values because they are purely Hindi values, which believes that science and spirituality are basically two sides of the same coin, which believes that science and spirituality are the two pillars of the cosmic truth. And how beautifully we have used it, not let one over, overpower the other. When the science fails to answer questions, that's when Hindu philosophy answers them. So I think the philosophy and science, we have shown how our scientists believe in it. Just because somebody has a tilak or is praying does not mean that their science is inferior to the one who does not believe in anything. So this great respect for Indian scientific temperament very, very Indian style scientific temperament. We have made this film. It's about pride for India. 
everybody when everybody thought that india cannot achieve anything india will die 30 40 crore people will die in india and everybody was blackmailing about vaccines everybody was blackmailing india that's a time when india rose up to the occasion and india made the world's first and the fastest and the only indigenous vaccine within 8 9 months and this vaccine was made by the indic women power with their sacrifice with their tapasya how they kept looking after their children their in-laws their old parents their neighbors their colleagues are doing house uh, chores also because no maid servants were available so cleaning house washing utensils but at the same time they also kept making vaccine and how much they have sacrificed personally because of that you will see in this film your heart will be filled with pride for your mothers for your sisters for especially a traditional indian women who never ever ever say no to a challenge so i believe that whenever we talk about nationalism we show this macho young man or the macho hero they are always named nationalism is always connected to uh, the the masculine side but we said no these are the nation builders let's show their story and that's what motivated so it's a very unique i don't think this kind of film has ever been made before i will just ask and pray to all of you to bless us we just want this film to work if it works moderately it will open up it will give chance to so many young people to tell stories about great indian women the women power ordinary women middle class women your mother my mother their stories and obviously the great country we have so uh i i pray to you please bless us please when the film releases come and see especially buy tickets for any woman you know who you respect or love your mother your friend's mother your sister your colleague somewhere your maid servants in every household there is some maid servant who comes she also sacrifices so much to raise her children she is also a nation builder so she gives you the freedom to pursue your work so buy her ticket and bring her to this thing why i am requesting and pleading for you to become brand ambassadors of this particular film is because we are fighting a very 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 lethal fight we are in a war with bollywood which actually gives bad name to india outside india and also it keeps demoralizing our own young people and influence them with lots of western values we are trying to fight that system by working with people who believe in this great country so when a vaccine war works then 10 more vivek agnihotri can make those kind of films you have seen kashmir files work then came kerala story after this will come the delhi files then two three more people i am uh, i am uh, i have engaged and i am helping them and i am mentoring them and i am producing the films to bring to you of great subjects which have concerned you so much so this is how i am trying to bring indic stories in foreground tell the world about it correct uh, problem like the kashmir files told the senators and congressmen and members of parliaments all over the world we have gone and gone to uk parliament we have gone to america capital we have gone to german parliament we go to whole lot of places and we have tried to show this film and convince and persuade the policy makers in the world that kashmir was always always integral part of hindu civilization and as long as bharat is there it cannot be questioned everybody believes in that we showed them the ugly side of the truth which other bollywood films failed to do they glorified terrorists of kashmir our film exposed the terrorists of kashmir so we showed them this side of terrorism and so we are trying to use our films as soft power to tell indic stories about our greatnesses to correct the narrative or even fight the narrative i believe i am a yodha i am a soldier of great hindu civilization and i am using my art of cinema as a soft power to take the name and the glory and the respect of bharat mata as high as possible i want all elderly people to bless me all the younger ones than me 
to send me your good wishes and please pray for us so that our next film, The Vaccine War, uh, people come and watch and they feel very, very proud of Bharat and the real Matas of Bharat, our own mothers. Thank you very much. And you can ask me questions for, I think, next 10 minutes or so. And I wish all of you, and I thank the organizers for inviting me. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Vande Matra. Thank you very much, uh, Vivek Agniyotri ji. It was really insightful and delighted to hear your journey. Uh, we do have uh, some questions um, that we want to take at this point of time. Uh, you talked about uh, cinema being a soft power and how well the Hollywood industry uses it and how uh, as uh, Indian filmmakers, we have failed to an extent to bring out, you know, uh, to use uh, the cinema as a soft power. You talked about your journey, how you actually move away from the stereotype of uh, making Bollywood movies. So the question is, what is the part that the budding filmmakers or the fresh newly entrants to the film industry should take to actually uh, fight against the current narratives that are being uh, set by the uh, stereotypical Bollywood movies. What What is your message? How should they approach this? See, number one, you, you delete the word Bollywood from your mind. Because very often when we are fighting an enemy, very often we become like the enemy. So don't make that mistake. Forget there is any Bollywood. Now you have to decide that, yes, I'm a storyteller. So first of all, your heart should be in the right place. You should be willing to sacrifice as much as required to achieve your goal. Take it like a life mission. Don't do it as a hobby or just because it's a very glorified business. Then you pick up a story which is closest to your heart. Closest means which is part of your life. Tell that story as your first story. But please tell it with all the honesty and sincerity. I, my key word is, my thumb rule is, do not try to impress anyone. Let Bollywood do that. You express yourself. You tell your thing. What you want to say, say it with conviction, without fear and without greed. Say it like it's a matter of life and death. Say it like it's the cosmic truth. And rest, leave it to the any God you believe in, leave it to God, leave it to the superpowers, leave it to the divine. Because when you do this, this much, the divine will take you across the river, will show you the sun and the sunshine in the end. It was a great answer and uh, with a philosophical bent of mind. And uh, uh, thank you so much for that. Now, I think you will agree that uh, when you had uh, released Buddha in the traffic jam, uh, there's also one question pertaining to that, uh, how it was received today and uh, how films like that are being received today is actually, there's a lot of change in the acceptance, how people are perceiving it, receiving it. Now, do you think, uh, what do you think is different today from what it was then? And how do you take this to your advantage, this change in perspective, perspective? And how can we take this to leverage it further? The whole way that the people are receiving the movies today, those kind of movies are completely different. We saw that in um, the Kashmir files. We saw that in Tashkent files. I mean, we go, we learned a lot from, in fact, you are educating the youth through these Indic stories. I don't, think so much of knowledge would have, you know, people would have got, if not for such movies, which is gaining so So how can it it further? And what do you think has changed in the mindset of the audience? Okay, very good question. So, uh, see, Buddha in a traffic jam actually changed the landscape of cinema in this country. It was a very, very courageous film, not because I made it, even if I have not 
Nothing to do with it. I'll still say the same thing about the film. It's a very courageous film. It was a prophetic film. This was a problem which existed, existed, but nobody was touching it because of the fear. I'll tell you the fear was because urban nexels before this film were called historians and intellectuals and the elite of the society. So everybody was scared of their power. But we made the film and we exposed their power, but everybody said, no, no, it is not possible. But then it actually happened in JNU that the children, the, the students started saying Bharat Tere they were arrested and some people are still behind the, uh, in the jail. So at that time, it was a very, very courageous thing. But today, uh, urban axles are everywhere. People know, even a child can tell this guy is an urban axle. Anyways, so today, Buddha in a traffic jam is perceived very well. It is received very well. At that time, it was very difficult because people were not used to those kind of things. Tashkent Files was received very well. Kashmir Files overwhelming. But what Buddha and Traffic Jam did, it opened up the eyes of the studios and the OTT channels and the multiplex and Inox and PVRs that these, this kind of cinema can also work. And therefore, I think on the 11th of August, after a few days, our web series is coming on Z5 called the Kashmir Unreported. Now, whatever research we did for four years, all the video testimonies we did, which actually the government of India should have done, but we did it. All those we have edited, got the historians, got the experts, got the army of, and we have weaved them in such a way that those seven, eight part series will become modern literature for youth to go and refer to, because I know the younger people as they, Days pass by, younger people will not go and pick up a book from library and read it. They want to see things quickly where they can uh, consume what they want to consume. This will forever remain as the modern literature. Kashmir files will remain as part of modern literature. If anybody sees Tashkent files, they will know everything about the politics of 60s and 70s and Nehru and Indira Gandhi's time and the Russia and KGB and everything. So, the Kashmir and reported would have been impossible. And it is true because I tried the same thing with the research of Tashkent files. I said, I have got this unseen kind of a documentation on Lal Bahadur Shastri's death. And not only that, the politics of that time, why don't I make a web series of this? All the OTT channels threw me out of their office. They said, this man is crazy. He doesn't know his job. Anyways, he's right wing. We don't want to deal with him. And they humiliated me actually. When we went with, before the release of Kashmir Files with Netflix called us, we met them and we showed them the, <coughs> some parts of Kashmir unreported. <coughs> they also kicked us out of their office. They said it talks about Islamic terrorism and we cannot accept it. If you talk about Islamic terrorism, you have to talk about Hindu terrorism also. I said, but where is Hindu terrorism? So, but today it is possible. It's coming on Z5. It is possible for me to make such a complex scientific film like the vaccine war, but we have made it so simple and easy that when you bring your youngsters to the hall, you, they will say thank you. So I think Buddha in a Traffic Jam, that way is a landmark film, which opened up gates for very complex ideas to be consumed by the audience and the studios as well. Wonderful. So uh, we do have a couple more questions. and. Um, of course, your main goal and aim is to bring in fact-based stories to the table. And um, by doing this, definitely you would encounter many challenges in presenting such stories, right? You, how do you still, you know, how do you steer through this, uh, you know, challenges and still be steadfast and also ensure that you bring this nationalistic perspective, right, onto the films? So how do you manage this? There's a share and there's a couplet in Urdu which says, uh, itni padhi ki asan ho gai, which means that there were so many challenges in my life that they became very simple and easy. So uh, the thing is when Buddha in a traffic jam came, then all these urban nexals filed lots of cases, legal cases against me. They isolated me, they cut me off, they canceled me. They did every kind of uh, trick in the trade. Uh, basically to demoralize me so that I shut myself, shut my mouth. 
but then uh, buddhaina traffic jam worked so i got used to that kind of opposition and the ridicule and humiliation and isolation and cancelling of um, uh, cancel uh, cancelling of me then came the tashkent files at that time congress party filed many legal cases against me so i kept fighting them they started abusing me in public and with kashmir files there were fatwas on my name and my uh, there was a threat to my life then thanks i got the security from the government and uh, now with the vaccine war i have i think lot of international pharma lobbies and some urban nexels from india who are brand ambassadors of these pharma lobbies are going to file cases against me because they are already started calling this film a propaganda so i am very uh, happy that at least somebody is going to challenge it let's see what happens they can't even digest a good positive inspiring story about india so i am quite used to facing these challenges that's why i told all the youngsters in the first question itself that if they really really want to uh do something then they have to uh, they cannot have fear of losing something they should be able to sacrifice whatever they have including their life be a yodha be a warrior okay. so i think let's take a last I, question now our last question yes last question yeah one last question and that again it's come live that next question is do you see a positive change in the mindset of members of the movie industry since there has been a shift in the audience taste this is more towards the mindset of the members of the movie industry do you see any positive change see there is no group called movie industry there are all kinds of people who are making movies i can just tell you about bollywood uh, if you mean by that because there is tamil industry there is bengali industry all industries have different uh, commercial models and they are uh, doing differently at different times but yes bollywood because i keep observing them all the times and i uh, keep meeting all these people all the time so i can tell you that i don't think bollywood has changed i don't think bollywood will change and because uh, some of their very very mediocre films with huge stars are going to do huge business so they will be more encouraged that okay mediocrity sells they'll they'll keep selling you western values your children will learn more about the west than they will know about your own culture and traditions this is going to happen with bollywood for a long time i don't think it's changing but yes the this is the bad news and if you think <laughs> i don't think they are going to change at all it's like a dog's tail you know but this is a bad news but the good news is that because we from buddha in a traffic jam we have been trying to create an ecosystem of like minded young filmmakers and people bringing them closer when i started for first i think till 2019 i would say uh, i was all alone me and my wife pallavi joshi we were all alone there was nobody with us then after 2019 little more people joined and after kashmir files now the number is in hundreds so from 0 to 1 to 10 now we are in hundreds and i hope with vaccine war again it will increase and we are also we have a foundation i am with the foundation and we do lot of uh, work to mentor young people so we are also supporting mentoring promoting producing helping and create an ecosystem and lead them so that there are many many stories about our culture about our great tradition about hindu civilization so all these films should become textbooks for the young generation they see this they know ah oh, this is what nalanda was all about okay okay this is how it was so but they should be good powerful stories told in an entertaining manner in a international quality and show it they should be for global consumption so this is what i am doing so i think you it was permit great me uh, so if you permit me one last question okay one last means i have to run the last means yeah. i have, yeah, to, go the very, I have oh, to go to the studio i have to go to the studio yeah yeah this one thing for uh, important question what is your message for the youth of this country on the occasion of the 76th independence day all i would say is that if you are a young person you have to choose what you want in life this is the time to set the purpose of your life if the purpose of your life is to to create valuation to have your value then i would say do whatever you like go to live in us join google do whatever you like you do in life and may god bless you but if you want create a life of value 
if you want value addition in your purpose of your life, then I would say there is no other country in the world, no other cultural ecosystem, no other civilization in the world better than Bharat's. I have traveled everywhere. I have lived. I have studied also outside of India. And I am telling you with utmost sincerity, responsibility, and confidence, and conviction that there is no better reward, no better satisfaction than being a son of Bharat Mata. So please surrender yourself to the cause of this great country. Do something which helps the country which helps our civilization and try to study the philosophy of Hindu civilization that will give you the, that will become the pillar of your purpose, of your cause. Thank you. Thank you very much. With that great uh, note as conclusion, we thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for uh, we have a certain a couple of key messages, and uh, we want to talk about uh, some of the upcoming programs. Uh, we, as you know, we have the uh, you know student programs that is coming up, and uh, tomorrow morning at seven thirty, we request all uh, to join in great numbers uh, to talk about the tribal freedom fighter, Helen Lecture. So please do. Uh, take time and join um, in the morning. This is uh, for the youth and students. And uh, as you all know, we uh, Disha Bharat uh, Swaraj Ratha, it is carrying the message of Bharat. It has uh, started and tomorrow we are leaving from Hubli at 8.30 a.m. and reaching Vijayapura by 6.30 p.m. in the evening. And as you all know, the uh, Swarajya Rata is moving towards various districts and taluks of Karnataka. Please receive it with great respect. And if you want to reach us to organize any events or uh, in your town, in colleges, or in any of your schools in uh, districts, please do connect with us. We will be offering Bharat Mata Puja through Swarajya Rata. And we want to greatly inspire the youngsters and we want to instill a sense of patriotism in youngsters. So we want to seek your cooperation to make this Vijaya Yatra of this Bharat Mata a huge success. We also have upcoming programs. As you, as you know that this is a series of programs that is being conducted as part of My Bharat campaign. And tomorrow we have the topic, as you are seeing flashed on the screen, My Bharat, a great civilization unconquered, we have an eminent speaker, Sandeep Balakrishna. He is an author and thinker, and the time is the same, 7 p.m. And as always, the great support you have been showing us by joining us, we request you to spread this message far and wide and join this program as well. Again, thank you all for making this series of programs a great success and please do drive this message across your friends and family and ask them to join these programs. Thank you all.